Since I graduated from school and recovered from my chaotic experience, my curiosity to learn has been growing. Out of school, there are a lot of things I want to learn about. Surtout, je souhaite parler couramment en français et aussi d'appliquer euh, la grammaire dans mes conversations et quand je parle. Mais, what frustrates me is that I haven't been able to, in myself studying, make consistent progress. So whether you're learning a language like me right now or reconciling with maths as I plan to do in the near future, in this video you'll see how I'm setting up an organizational system that supports my learning and also build a habit that hopefully sustains consistent progress in my desired pursuit of knowledge. In this video I'm using my French learning as our case study but I believe that this can apply to any subject you're curious about. Let's hop in! A big part of me feeling overwhelmed in learning French was not having my resources organized, my progress tracked, and my schedule set up. These factors all accumulated in an overarching confusion. That's all I felt, confusion. So let's begin with an outline of how I'm doing this to study a new subject, in quotes, and then we'll take a closer look at each part of the system. Let's talk about organization. And I need to be honest, I tend to go off the rails with this, so I'll try to keep it simple when I'm explaining. But basically, I will give you a rundown of the different sections that I'm breaking my system into, you know, to organize all of the data. Now, I also want to mention, you can definitely use a notebook for this. I personally use a digital workspace such as Notion and honestly the options for this are endless. Choose something that works for you and doesn't overwhelm you. As I said, we'll dive into each one of these in a second. First page is our goals page. The next page are the pillars of your subject. So for me, it would be language learning pillars which encapsulate uh, speaking, reading, and so on. Then our weekly schedule, which tells us on which days we're studying and what to do. And lastly, I recommend creating a task list. Something I personally remind myself of is that this system has to work for me, slash it needs to work for you, right? Help you keep a clear head through organizing your resources, be a tool for you, so you know when to do what and that you don't get as confused as I have in the past. So I like to start with defining my goals. It just sort of gives me a sense of direction. If you don't have external requirements such as a language proficiency exam or a, an application for school or a job, try making, try defining your own requirements for a certain time span. A specific example would be to choose a series you want to watch, right? And have the goal to be able to watch that without translated subtitles or to be able to watch that and enjoy what's going on. That's a big goal when you're starting off with a language, for example. For me personally, it helps to break down my goals into the pillars of my subject. So now for learning French, you know, I broke it down into my speaking goals, my reading goals, my vocabulary goals, things like that. It helps, you know, and every week I definitely look into my goals, see what I'm working towards. So I keep aligned with my mission. So I've broken down my subject into pillars, right? So basically subcategories. And now for each subcategory, such as grammar and vocabulary and so on, I am noting three to five different methods slash these are actually sort of tasks slash actions that you can just pick and then plop into your weekly schedule and task list. In Notion, I have my language learning pillars, right? Some cute images and then under methods i have a list of what to do so that when i'm creating my schedules when i am sitting down to study i know exactly what i can do or i can choose from this list now an example for grammar would be you know read 
read a chapter and do the exercises. Um, another one would be just brain dump a mind map. So choose a topic and then just write everything you know. Those are grammar uh, study methods. Uh, so I did that for each of my language learning pillar so that we can use this information to create our weekly schedule. Creating a weekly schedule means allocating your attention and time according to your goals. This right here is an example of how your study schedule could look like. To determine this breakdown of your attention and time, the two questions you'll want to answer are, how much time can I study each week? And secondly, how much of that time is allocated to each category of my subject? As an example, if your main focus right now is speaking, you could allocate 70% of your total time that you spend studying the subject each week to speaking, meaning you're giving everything else you want to learn in the subject 30% of your time. Keep in mind the value of repetition and habit. It will probably be more beneficial to your progress to do smaller sessions more often than for example bulking an 8 hour study session during the weekend. I personally broke down my time dedication for learning French into 30 minute pomodoros since that's how I approach my work sessions. These can also be accumulated, for example when I'm taking a 1 hour class. Merci à vous! Au revoir! Y'all, I almost forgot that I had this class, okay? The last part of my organizational system is a task list. I recommend maintaining a task list which helps you track projects within your studying and stay on top of goals and appointments such as language classes. One of my projects right now is inputting my vocab list from my notes into Anki. This is also a great place to track your weekly and your monthly goals. Through my experience, I believe long-term progress may only be achieved when I can do things without feeling like it or motivation being present. Another way to describe this would be combating resistance. More about that later. By intentionally building up this habit, I am sort of carving this path of least resistance to studying and, in my example, learning French. Building a new habit from scratch isn't the objective here. This is why we're using habit stacking. To implement a new habit, I am going to look at my existing routine. The principle here is that we are adding new habits to a chain of existing ones, or in this example, in between them. To optimize my habit formation, I try to implement the four-step pattern that we apparently go through with each of our habits according to James Clear to my French studying sessions. The objective here, according to James Clear, is make it obvious. So for me, it's when the clock strikes 1 p.m., I'm at my desk. I think in the book an example is laying out the fruit because the fruit looks good, it looks attractive and I feel that is reflected in my organizational system. It makes it easier to click on the page and get started. Speaking of getting started, the third step is response and I believe that having my system and my schedule all feed into making this response super easy. Step four is the reward and to me it is satisfying to complete the task, to know that I'm going to make progress and to know that the work I'm putting in and showing up is worth it and is going to accumulate in hopefully a fulfilling studying and learning journey. I want to circle back to what I said at the beginning of this video and the reason why we're doing this. 
I was frustrated that I couldn't make consistent progress and now I'm putting in all of this work to create a habit out of this, right? So that I don't have to put so much energy into thinking about doing this and also convincing myself to do this, motivate myself to do this. Now, I want to just emphasize on the fact that compliance is probably the most important thing, especially in the beginning of um, building up a habit. Be prepared to be flexible and I guess that also can lead back to the point of not making all of this perfect and spending too much time on preparing. Sometimes you just need to get into the water and start swimming to see which style you need to swim. Oh my god. <laughs> Most importantly, show up and if that requires you making changes, if that requires you to take another approach, do that, right? Yesterday. I didn't do any studying. Maybe I need to implement a day of not studying. So perhaps we'll do some adjustments. I believe that each time you show up, you beat resistance and lay a stone in the path towards building this habit. This is a concept I learned about and is elaborated on in the book War of Art by Stephen Pressfield. If you're interested in reading more about how resistance shows up and how to approach getting your work done, I highly recommend this short read. To be honest, it wasn't the easiest to show up in the last two weeks when I was setting everything up because there was so much uncertainty and I didn't really know where to start. When I was building my system, documenting my process and starting to sit down for my studying, I realized once more how impossible it is to plan your way to great progress. So I've made changes along the way to my schedule, to my methods, and I'm still in the first weeks of showing up regularly. Right now, I'm prioritizing my compliance of showing up for my future self to study. Beyond this pep talk, which perhaps I needed the most out of all of you, I hope that this video has brought you closer to building the study habits of your dreams. Thank you so much for watching up to this point. Here's a little behind the scenes. Um, as I touched on at the beginning of this video, I aspire to learn throughout my entire life and hope to make consistent progress in my desired study pursuits. Um, through making it a daily practice or, you know, a regular practice and implement studying in my habits. I would love to know from you uh, in the comments down below what topics you are curious about and want to learn in or outside of school and are making time for. Alrighty, y'all. I'm gonna see you soon. And until then, peace.